This is ridiculous. We can't go through another show like the one we just had. I'm going to do something. Okay. Uh -oh. I'm going to break the stalemate. I'm going to invite both sides to my house, and I'm going to mediate a settlement. Uh, it, come on, Murph. I, I don't know if a person who tried to run down her mechanic over a billing dispute is the right one for the job. All right. You'll see. Oh. Carl, I have an interesting proposition for you. I'd like you to come to my place tomorrow night. Sweet Lord, my prayers have been answered. You're not getting this, Carl. I want to talk about the strike. I'm going to get Jean Kinsella to come, and maybe we can get a dialogue started. I can't do that, Murphy. The union has a negotiating team. We could have some cake and some coffee. It'll be like a little party. What's the harm? Please, Murphy, don't do this. Don't make me choose between my union and you. I'd never ask you to do that, Carl. But I will wear those black pumps you like so much. God forgive me, I'm putty in your hands. <laughs> Okay, the baseboards in the library have now been sanded and primed to perfection. It is now decision time. Navajo white or eggshell? Not now, Eldon. They'll be here any minute. You pick a color. So you can come to me in six weeks and go, Oh, Eldon, how I hate my baseboards. Each time I look at them, I'm reminded of my apathy. No, this has got to be your decision because the wrong baseboard can throw off and upset the whole color... Okay, just show me the samples, all right? <laughs> They're the same color. I worry about you. I really do. Now, the Navajo has a clear undertone of gray while the eggshell is suffused the with yellow. The eggshell. I'll take the eggshell, okay? Okay, but in the long run, I think you'd be happier with the Navajo. Oh, God, they're here. Eldon, do me a favor. I baked a cake. Would you put it on a platter while I get the door? I don't know. I'm still trying to get over this eggshell thing. I'll take the Navajo. All right. <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Hi, Carl. John, what are you doing here? Uh, no offense, Murphy, but knowing how disoriented Carl gets around you, the guy's decided he shouldn't try to handle this on his own. And I still say that's ridiculous. Here, Murphy, in honor of my first visit to your home, it's a rose quartz crystal. They say it stimulates the love impulse. The door. Guys, make yourselves comfortable. Jean. Thank you for coming. Okay. So my star reporter's not coming down with the flu before next week's show, right? I'm feeling better already. Good. John, Carl, you know Jean Kinsella. <clears throat> I remember. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, why don't we all sit down? That's okay. We'll stand. My back's a little tight. I think I'll stand, too. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't tell me you're going to stand all evening. Isn't that just a little bit silly? Jean? John, Carl, <laughs> there are plenty of chairs. Look, just pick one. Pick one and sit. Go on. <laughs> okay, this is not a problem. Look over there. See that? Another chair just like it, exactly down to the last detail. <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, Jean, why don't you take this chair, John, you take that chair, and I'll sit on the couch. <laughs> Great. We've accomplished something already, and who knows? Maybe if we get to know each other a little as people, we can get some sort of dialogue started. <laughs> so, that's basically why we're here, to visit, to talk to get to know each other a little. I myself was born in Philadelphia. <laughs> in the spring, May, 1948. And Jean, did you know that John has two little boys almost the same age as Debbie and Elise? What are their names, John? John Jr. <laughs> and the other one? John? Tommy. There! We're talking. And why? Because we found something you have in common. Children. God bless them. <laughs> oh, my house full. What about you, Murphy? 
<laughs> and you know, Christmas is right around the corner. Maybe we could have a little party so the kids could all meet. Well, if this strike goes on much longer, my kids won't have a Christmas. Mm. You guys could be back to work tomorrow if you'd give a little. <laughs> there it is. There's management's definition of negotiating. You give, we take. Oh, that old song again. We're always the bad guys. Do you have any idea how competitive TV is today? All you do is complain. Hey, now we're communicating. <laughs> Doesn't that look good? <laughs> Why don't we take a five and have some cake? I baked it myself as a gesture of friendship so that we may all partake of it and rejoice. <laughs> Eldon, would you pass it around? I put it on a platter. I brought it out here. You want it served? Hire somebody named Babette. <laughs> Who was that? He's my painter. Must be union. Oh, here we go again. More jokes about overpaid, lazy union guys. Now, John, I'm sure Gene only meant that some old union rules are a little costly for today's market. Cake? I ate already. You want to talk cost? Let's cut some of these corporate expense accounts. Hey, listen, I deserve every penny I get. Uh, Gene, I'm sure that John was merely pointing out that you're not under quite the same financial pressure. Have a piece of cake, Gene. I'm not hungry. If we didn't have to pay three guys to move a cable every time, maybe we could afford to pay him more. Here's your cake, John. I said I don't want it. Or maybe you'd just keep that money yourself for a little extra Christmas bonus. Gene, doesn't this look good? No. Let's talk about Christmas bonuses. What's your overtime now? 10,000 bucks an hour? How about you, Carl? Cake? Murphy, I may be in love, but I'm not insane. Okay, that's it. I've had it. Who do you think you are playing games with people's lives? You guys are pathetic. What makes you think you can put your own egos before the good of our profession? Well, I'll tell you something. I'm locking that door. You're not leaving here until we can come up with a deal you can take back to your people. And until that cake is gone, and I mean every crumb, I sweat bullets over that thing. No mix, no microwave. I separated eggs, I pre-sifted. We're talking scratch, baby. So grab a pencil and grab a fork. You're not leaving here until I'm ready to let you out. Have I made myself clear?